Jiggy Cat On a damn villain spree This is not good so And you can't mimic my energy 100 round drum And me hanging like a centipede Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys are having an awesome day for today. With that being all out the way, today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys on how to overclock your PlayStation Vita or your PS TV with this new plugin called PSV Shell. I'm assuming it just stands for PlayStation Vita Shell. But with that being out the way, this is a very easy to install plugin via with auto plugin, and it looks really good that I can you know state from testing this out on my PlayStation Vita. It has a really nice GUI method or basically a GUI that showcases is a lot of useful information such as you know the cpu overclocks as among other things via dealing with the playstation vita's kernel so if you're into you know having a nice gui or basically a cool looking vsh menu i do recommend to go ahead and install this on your vita with that being stated all out the way as well we're going to go ahead and get started on today's prerequisites and any items that i do state will be in the link in the description down below so first things first you need a modded playstation vita that's already hacked via with using either the trinity Hankaku, Hon Core, Hon Core 2 Exploit. Today I'm going to be using my PlayStation Vita 1000 that is on 3.60 for this process. So that's another thing I do want to state. You can do this on higher firmware. So if you're on 3.73, 3.70, you have to be either on 3.60 or 3.65 uh, firmware only. So I'm going to be using my 3.60 PlayStation Vita that's via with using um, Hankaku Enzo. As well, another prerequisite you'll need is a latest build of Vita Shell. You also need the latest version of auto plugin vpk which is 4.11 that's the latest version that's out as i'm recording this um as well you'll need um any playstation vita game to test i assume um the best vita game on how to test this is via with borderlands i know a lot of people say that game um you know suffers from frame drops so a lot of plugin um you know are basically a lot of plugins that you know support overclocking a lot of people test via that game on but for today you can use any game of choice optional in terms of transferring your files over for today whether if you are using a usb cable or file the ftp client it really doesn't matter just you know choose one for this process for today i'm going to be using file the ftp client but with all of those uh prerequisites getting out the way in terms of you know how to transfer your files i just want to give a special thanks out to the person who actually made this awesome plugin so thank you electri for making this plugin for the scene it's really good looking but with all of that getting stated out the way don't forget if you need any help go ahead and join my discord but we're going to go ahead and get started on the PlayStation Vita side of things. Alrighty guys, assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, we're going to go ahead and get started on the PlayStation Vita side of things. So first things first, I'm assuming that you already have Vita Shell installed. If you don't already have Vita Shell installed and your device is not either on 3.60 or 3.65, I will have a card right now that will showcase on how to downgrade your system. As well, I will have another card in a few seconds on basically how to get Vita Shell installed onto your device. But assuming that you already have Vita Shell, I'll have that in the link in the description down below the actual vpk we need to go ahead and go into it make sure if you have your wi-fi on if you're going to be transferring your files over so let's go ahead into vita shell for this process so once you're in vita shell for this process go ahead depending on how you want to transfer your files over if you're going to be using files of the ftp client make sure your wi-fi is on of course or if you're going to be doing this via with a usb cable which is much faster and that's what i recommend for you guys go ahead get your playstation vita connected via by your usb cable from your pc to vita but if you're going to be transferring files like me via with files all you got to do is hit start on your device make sure your select button if you're using a usb connection to transfer your files keep it to um, basically USB but go ahead and hit left or right on your d-pad to toggle it to FTP hit circle and then hit select and this is the PlayStation Vita's IP that we need to have broadcasted so we could go ahead and use this via with files of the FTP client so I'm gonna go ahead from my PC from here and then get this set up via with files of the FTP client Alrighty guys, so we're back on the PC as showcased here. What we need to do now is in the link in the description down below, you can download the latest version of autoplugin.vpk. It'll be in a GitHub. Just go ahead and drag the file out to your desktop or wherever you have it located. What we need to do now is go ahead into files of the FTP client, open that up. 
and we need to go ahead and type in our PlayStation Vita's IP address plus the um, port for our host so we could transfer over our auto plugin.vpk file. So, of course, your IP will be different from mine. So, here is mine's right here. And then your port, you got to just type in 1337. Our ports will be the same, but our IPs will be different. I'll have a little picture right here showcasing on where to find your IP if you're transferring over via FTP. If you're using a USB connection, you'll see it like a little uh, window via and file explorer with all your contents. But once you um quick connect, you should see all of your Vita's directories. What we're gonna do now is fairly simple. All we're doing is just taking our auto plugin.vbk, installing it to UX0. Go ahead and overwrite if you have a older version of it. So it won't take too long for this basically to install. It's going to take maybe like, I don't know, five to 10 seconds. It's not a huge file, it's only five megabytes. But once it's fully installed, if we check our successful transfers as well, and you'll get a little notification on the Windows 10. Let me maximize this. You can see that my uh, VPK has transferred over. So let's go into UX0, scroll all the way down. Uh, yeah, right here it says um, you could tell it's the same date as I'm recording. This is auto plugin.vpk. So once your thing is uh, fully transferred over, we're gonna go back to our PlayStation Vita, get this installed, and let's go ahead and get install PSV shell. All right, guys. So we're back onto the PlayStation Vita as showcased here. Let's go ahead and disconnect our FTP server. So go ahead and hit circle on your device. What we're gonna do now is go into UX0, scroll all the way down till we find our auto plugin.vpk. So here is it right here. Go ahead and hit X. It's going to take a while for it to install. Just hit X again if you get this um, error message or this message right there. It shouldn't take too long. I'm basically rewriting my older version of auto plugin.vpk, but if it's your first time installing, you'll see the live bubble pop up and down on your screen. But since I'm rewriting a older version, it's not going to basically show up that it's updated or like it's a new application on the Vita. But I'm just waiting for it to do its thing right now. Hopefully it won't take too much longer. All right, so 99%. And it should be done right now, hopefully. All right, yeah, so it's done right now. What we're gonna do is go ahead and hit the home button on our PlayStation Vita. And now what we're gonna do is go to auto plugin. Yours may be um, at the bottom of your list, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up auto plugin.vpk. You can see that it's version 4.11 and now what we're going to do is fairly simple on how to set this up. So right here, what we're going to do is go to plugins for Vita, click X, go into install plugins. And what we're going to do is go all the way down till we find PSV shell by Electri. I just passed it. All right. Yeah. So it's right here. It's just the little description for it, it says yet yeah, another overclocking plug in. There's other um, overclocking plugins as well. But for today, we're just going to be focused on PSV shell. Um, you could either install it to UX0 or UR0, wherever you have your tie folder at. I'm going to be installing mine to UR0. So go ahead and hit X. So it's been installed. What you want to do now is go ahead and hit start on your PlayStation Vita. So once you hit start, it will restart your system. And then I'll come back once my PlayStation Vita is fully restarted. And then I'm going to show you guys on how to get the actual PSV shell running on your end. Alrighty guys, so as showcased here, I'm basically back onto my PlayStation Vita. What you want to do now is hold down the select button and then the up on the D-pad. And then you'll see something in the right hand corner or excuse me the left hand corner and you'll see like a little green text that means your thing is on 60 frames per second if you hold it one more time you'll get another um basically uh gui thing that will state your system cpu as well as the frames per second plus on how um hot your vita is running so i think mine's is running at 30 celsius and some other um things to note via with the playstation via on its kernel so let's go ahead and hold the select button again up on the d-pad and this is where um you will see all of your menu or basically all of the stuff that is contained with psv shell so you can see your cpu you can also see your memory your v memory you also some other stuff like as temperature and it looks very nice on the system as well of course, this is the main part of this tutorial on how to overclock your system. So naturally, the PlayStation Vita runs at 333 megahertz. And what you can do 
is by um, hitting X on this. You could go ahead and toggle it all the way up to 500 megahertz if you want to. Um, just to know, it's not always a good thing to you know have your CPU at this high running. Um, you can do it, but you know I'm not responsible if you you know break your system or your system overheats or anything like that. But if you really want to toggle up all your um you know the BUS ES4 um megahertz, you can if you want to. If you want the best performance out of your system, but for now I'm just gonna put mine to 444 megahertz. Um, you could also have your XBR, um, you know, toggled up to 166. Your BUS all the way toggle up to I believe 222, and you could have other stuff, you know, toggled to you know whatever preference you want. And then you could save your uh, profile as well via Wit PSV Show. By the way, you could also run this within mid game, so that is pretty cool too as well so if you want to um basically get this menu out of your way all you got to do is hit select down on the d-pad to toggle it off so you got to hit it three times and then if you want to toggle it back on hit it three times again by holding select and as well the up on the d-pad but what we're going to do now is just go ahead and test the game so we're going to open up a uh, call of duty black ops declassified so i'm just trying to run the game right here Hopefully it won't take too long for it to boot up. So here's the game running in real time. Let me go ahead and showcase that you can run this, uh, you know, the menu in real time once it's uh, booted up on the screen. So yeah, you can see right here that I am running the menu within the game. So it's pretty cool that I could do this in real time. Um, just for tutorial purposes, I'll just, um, let me go ahead and cancel this out. Let me hit okay campaign i'll just go ahead and play the tutorial you can see that my thing is on 30 frames per second but once i start playing um let's go ahead and set my cpu clock to 500 megahertz just for today and then i'll i'll have actually all the settings turned away all up mind you when you have your system overclock you basically do raise some of your battery and it or basically your battery will drain faster so here is um, Call of Duty Disclassified Black Ops, you know, running on my system. All right, so the game is now running. And you can see I'm at a solid frame, 30 frames per second. I wonder if I turn off the clock or basically a CPU all the way down to 333 and everything to its normal, um, basically, at settings. You can see that my frame rate already dropped. And it's now at like 28 25 and stuff just from uh, moving around so yeah that's essentially on how to overclock your PlayStation Vita you can see that my CPU and stuff is running at a higher rate as well as I move through the game so you can see that actually having my um, CPU overclocked it actually you know does it justice but yeah if you guys did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like please be sure to comment down below and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below but this is Nagato and I'll see you guys next time hey everyone it's me Nagato's Revenge here hope you guys did enjoy today's video with that being out the way as well I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well it's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content whether it be for the Vita PS4 PS3 and such and so forth as well if you want to be in the mix of things and you want to join my official community you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you could become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace